Greetings. You have choose to be with choices today. And we appreciate it a whole lot. We say thanks. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Also from the set of choices. Our last discussion was based on how do we operate on good faith? How do we build trust on building relationships? So in order for this to be possible, we must intentionally be open and willing to work on relationships, create new positive experiences with others, talk to one another, find ways and means to connect with each other, say what you mean and mean what you see, keep and follow through on commitments you make, be consistent. You know, trust is essential because it provides a sense of safety and security. From the set of choices, we love you. God loves you. And so we want you to stay with us. We want to help you in this life so that you would be able to navigate life and all that it has to throw to us. Welcome again and blessings, blessings. God bless you. You know, last week we started a very important um, topic, and we were looking at the effects that we that could result from um, good relationships operating in good faith, of which trust was um, critical to the process. And we mentioned that we need to look at some things if we are going to have persons operating in good faith and their trust in persons. And one of the things we mentioned had to do with one being candid in terms of sharing of information. We looked at um, how one may honor people, the issue of respect. Because if we're going to build in trust, if we're going to build trust, we must demonstrate respect. We must uh, demonstrate honor. We must be able to speak the truth because people love when you're truthful and about what you're doing. And so there were a, a whole set of things that we identified and um, as to how we could actually build trust. Because without trust, without good faith and good relationships, um, a, as a family cannot advance, and a people cannot advance, a community cannot advance. Could you imagine if all of us are suspicious of one another in a community or in a family? How could that family grow? How could that family blossom? And then we talk about the importance of forgiveness. Listen, people may have done some things that we are not in agreement with and that we know those people, but that doesn't mean that as, as, as children of God, as people of God, we're going to cut ourselves off from them completely and abandon them. They probably would need help, so there's a how, you know? And, and so we have to be open. We have to be willing to engage. And sometimes you have to take the lesser ground because... Um, there are some people who are very strong and they're stubborn and so on, but the, the word of God says love covers a multitude of sins and soft words, soft words turn away wrath. And so sometimes we have to be open and we have to be candid. And I just quickly want to reflect and to show how this thing could be a blessing if you have good relation. The Bible in 2 Samuel 2 and 4 talks about um, Jonathan and David. David was not king as yet, but he had a very good relationship with Jonathan. Now, Jonathan had a son called Mephibosheth, but David, Jonathan's father tried to kill David as a result of jealousy, and there is, there is no trust again. As a result of jealousy, he knew that David would have become king, David would have 90 kings. He said, let me kill this man. The son now, the king's son, developed a relationship with the would-be king. Now, it so happened that both of them died. The father and the son died. Jonathan and Saul died. But Jonathan had a son. And here what this king said, is there anyone from Saul's household? He didn't say Jonathan's household. From the king who tried to kill me, is there anyone from his household that I may show more to? And then they said, they have a son. There's a boy named Mephibosheth who has been crippled from birth. And David invited Mephibosheth to come to Jerusalem and live stay in my house and order that the, his people should always take care of me. That's forgiveness again. So look at that. So a blessing 
um, could be arrived when we have good relationships. But you know what? This blessing may not only transcend to, to, to people or the immediate people around, but to a nation generational because people are building good relationships. They are operating in good faith and they are trusting one another. Gentlemen. Wow. 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 Wow, doctor, that's a mugful. Thank you very, very much. You actually reminded me of last week. Last week when we went to the national anthem and we raised the point that was in the second stanza of the national anthem, all sons of one mother, Guyana the free. And um, that resonates even onto this program that it is important to value uh, that connection that is there and that is necessary. Uh, Greenland of Guyana, or heroes of your boat bondmen and free, lay the bones on our shore, the soil so they hallowed, and from them are we, one son, all sons of one mother, Guyana the free. We did talk about the toolbox that we have, and we are dishing out a few, taking out a few more tools, um, some of which Dr. Hudson highlighted the, the need for courage, common ground, openness. We spoke last week about honesty, loyalty, and reasonableness. And you, I'm sure you're going to hear quite a few more. But the point I would like to establish, we just cannot sit back. There are so many stories. Just sit back and allow things to run. And we say, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. I know of a, of a family who have inherited tremendous resources from the hard labor of their parents. But because there is a rift among them and no one is willing to make the sacrifice, that labor sacrifice of their four parents is now falling through their hands. That cannot be right. Or the old people say, mommy and daddy torn it in their grave. That can't be right. And for many of us, we have examples upon examples in our houses, in our homes, in our community, and in our nation, where we see this happening every day. We just cannot. We are sons of one mother can't live like this. Just have to find a way. A how? Yes. We are going to take out a few more tools. I love it, Dr. Hudson. Let's engage each other. It, it's important, you know, Rev. Doc, thanks for that intro. Now, I want to go back to David and what he did. He could have said, well, your grandfather pursue me tried to kill me on several occasions, and this presents a good opportunity. Now I am at the helm of things. I can take your life. Instead, he forgave, and he sought ways of fostering good relationship. He invited that young man to sit at his table and to eat with him. And that young man who saw himself, I mean, he was crippled, but he saw himself as a lesser being. He said, you know, he referred to himself as a dead dog. But David saw him through the eyes of mercy and forgiveness. And when we as a people, all sons of one mother, can see each other as being made in the image and the likeness of God, we will understand the worth of each other and we will seek ways of being reconciled to each other so we can move forward. Secondly, as you made reference, Rev, to that, that, those two brothers, you know, I'm thinking, because that's a sad situation, to see the resources go begging like that. But somebody got to step in. Someone has to step in and seek ways of bringing those two young men together to save not just themselves and that business, but that business can be generational in nature, moving from their parents to them and to their offsprings and even going forward. So someone has to step in 
and I might want to say, since you have an understanding of the issue, you might be the one who needs to step in. But in order for us to, to, to help, sometimes we got to, to put ourselves in a position, you know, where we take the blunt of so many things in order to help people, as we are doing on this program here today. And I love the story with, with um, King David, you know, because it really shows that redemption and uh, forgiveness and reconciliation, those are all important elements when it comes to building your team, you know. And many of us in Guyana, even within your own community, there might be people in your community that might have made mistakes, they might have um, been divisive historically. Uh, but when you start to integrate, you know, our faith into how we build relationships and how we perceive our community, we might realize that, that look, even though this is how, uh, this is the history this person might have, or this is how they have traditionally interacted with me, maybe there's a way for us to collaborate and for us to make something great happen. Because David told those men that were rejected from around the community, and he engaged with them. He engaged with them. He engaged with those resources. He activated them. You know, he activated those people right in this community. Those were people, those are resources in his community that were not being engaged, that were not active. And because he was willing to take a risk and he was willing to, to identify them as, you know, maybe they could work into my vision if we if we re-engage them and all that. Maybe that's how they could um maybe that is what, what we could do uh, when it comes to us building the kingdom and bringing about positive social change in our communities. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will pay. I like the reference to the Chinese movie there. <laughs> I need to go and watch it, a good Chinese movie, I think. It's a long time I watch one. But even as we talk about King David um, and Jonathan and Saul, you know, King David is known as one of the greatest kings uh, that ever ruled over Israel. And when we uh, con consider this aspect of his life, we realize that leadership, that greatness, uh, it is not easy. Life is not always easy. Challenges do arise. And so this is good to see how this human, this man who walked the earth, how he dealt with this situation. And, uh, you know, one perspective I want us to also look at is, you know, the impact of Jonathan. Uh, it was really for Jonathan's sake. Uh, Jonathan and, and David had such a good relationship that even so, um, David did not exact revenge as such. And I like how Reverend Hudson referenced that David, in his maturity, did not call for the uh, descendants of, or the, the relatives of Jonathan as such, but from the house of Saul. And as we build good relationships, we can see that they have far-reaching long-term benefits uh, so build good relationships, seek to have really good relationships, and they will outlive you. They will out, The benefits will outlive your time and my time here on the earth. Build good relationships. Well, having said that, Pastor Joshua, relationship is so important. And one of the things I, I heard Reverend Hudson and uh, Reverend Asana made mention to the fact of good communication skills. Because sometimes, you know, the way we communicate with others, sometimes we mean good, but how we say what we want to say can be seen as though we've been standoffish. And so we have to learn how to really communicate effectively in order so that we can cause people to come into that place of trust where they believe in us, believe in what we are pursuing, and come on board to work with us for the good of all. So having good communication skills is to me very important to this whole process. On the whole concept of, of communication skills, I, I like the, the point that you've made, um, Elder Wesley, but I recently saw a discussion on assertiveness, passivity, and aggression. Aggression is when you communicate with the intention of not listening to the other side and you're doing it in a manner that won't be resolved. Whereas passivity is when you go with something that you're not in agreement with and you just let it flow. Whereas assertiveness is the right balance 
Now, in fostering relationship, fostering it in good faith, and communicating mm-hmm. and, and, and everything, what we must be um, cognizant of is not to be aggressive, nor not to be passive, but to be assertive in communicating our ideas effectively in a manner that the other side knows, okay, this is what I think is beneficial to us in this circumstance, in this particular um, scenario. And this is what I think is the way forward. If the person have any opinion on it, they can go and share that. And if you don't agree with it, then you can communicate that and say, well, hey, I don't agree with this. You know, I'm sure all of the great leaders, David, different ones, they, they didn't just suck up to, to um, other people in the hope of, of moving forward, but doing it assertively. You don't have to, to, to just allow anything to go, but you do it in a manner that will be beneficial to both sides. You know, there's a season and there's a time for everything, all right? And um, sometimes you would hear people say, uh, a question might be asked, man, I'm trying hard and I'm not making any, any headway. This person is extremely difficult. And um, so you might want to, to show the person that I could be strong and difficult too. And so we're talking about the how, how you could deal with that. And uh, sometimes, you know, people say, I will meet you at the point of your need. But we have to ask ourselves, the, the man that we follow, how would he have dealt with some of these situations? Of course, there's a time when even Jesus became very serious on certain matters. But the whole thing about, about reaching people and helping them, you know, the scripture says the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. The neighborhood had all sorts of problems. And uh, I believe that we must never become weary in doing good, ultimately. I'm not saying that you will be, you will allow anything to happen to you, but sometimes you just got to keep pressing on and doing good. Because sometimes the same people that might be considered very difficult start starts to ask themselves, um, themselves the question, who is this woman? Who is this man? And you know, by doing that, you touch the very core that you are different. So you don't want to engage me, I'm engaging you. And I'm saying that one of the things that we have to do is somebody got to take the low ground and break down those walls because I don't know who could keep standing up, um, treating love in a bad way all the time. At some point in time, there'll be an awakening and then everybody will know who you are if you don't um, change your ways. So I'm saying like what we heard earlier, there are tremendous benefits that can be arrived when people begin to interact, when they begin to engage, when they begin to, to show concern and love. Because in the context of Diana, we said, you know, we are sons of one mother. Now, if we are sons of one mother, you don't, we, we shouldn't spend time fighting, but we should spend time building up and, and, and treating each other good and engage and working together for the benefit and the prosperity for a family and by extension, you know, for a community and, and the nation. You have to love one another. Brothers, thank you, Dr. Hudson. You know, in the book of Genesis 34, there is a story. And uh, we, we I put this to the platform for the teacher's consideration, for the nurse's consideration, for the doctor's consideration. Yes, for you who is sitting right at the street, street corner and listening to us. Genesis 37. The young lady's uh, name is Dinah. She was raped. And um, her brothers found who raped her. The persons, the, the, the family of the person who did this act agreed that this is a bad act. We must find a common ground. And uh, they agreed that they will circumcise themselves. They're going to um, abide by the Jewish law of purification. 
And in the midst of that process, three days within the process, two of the brothers who agreed that this is going to be a part of the peacemaking offer went and did a, the act of slaying, killing the, the men who were circumcised. Where is trust in all of this? And should we trust again when we have an experience of such betrayal? Can we? Should we? Reverend Tassano, you know, I, I, I always heard this growing up. Two wrongs don't make a right. And to my mind, that is what we saw playing out there. Two wrongs could never bring correction to a disastrous situation like that. And so at some point in time, corrective measures must be taken in order for the nation to benefit, for the family to benefit, you know? Um, you ask the question, how do we trust again? And it's a very good question because I decided to come to you in order to rectify this situation and you give me all assurance, this is what is going to happen. And it turns around the other way. Instead, my, I lose my life. So how can I trust again? How can my offsprings trust again when something like this has taken place? Really and truly, we have to see the outworking of forgiveness. We have to see the outworking of forgiveness. And it isn't something that is easy. It will take a process. And that process can be a very long one. If I, if I could add, um, one of the... Um, one of the things they say about, about those of us who lead and we lead with a servant's heart is that we take risk, right? Um, servant leaders, they, they are risk takers. And dealing with the issue, Reverend Sanna, can you trust again? Um, you take risk with the view that um, things could, could be better. Because if you continue to hold on to this particular position, there could be no turning around. It would be very difficult to talk, to, you know. When I heard that course, I said, sovereign leaders, apparently they're gamblers because gamblers are risk takers. But the issue is that sometimes, I'm sure many of us had a fall in a way with people. But later on, as we became engrossed in the things of God and Son, we took risk again. I shared my story, not on the platform, but the in our discussion, where you know someone who did something um, that is unthinkable came right back into my into my space, and I brought the person back with the risk. But how do you build people up? Again, how you develop? Do you develop relationships if you if you don't take risks? So, um, it, you know, you, you, that's why we have to we have to have men like Barnabas, you know, the sons of um, reconciliation. Um, you know, when Paul dismissed um, the, the young man, Barnabas said, "Go with me." So he took a risk. Here it is, a man. Chase the man. I don't want you with me. And here it is, another man said. Give me the same troublemaker, this problem. And look what that man became. So, you know, he said, send me John Mark. He's profitable to me in the gospel. So sometimes you got to take risks with people. Some of the worst people could very well turn on because, you know what? You decided not to abandon them, but I'm going to take a chance again with these people. It, it comes to that from, from, I'm not saying that you must openly go and take risks. Because you know you have to be calculated too. But if you just abandon people, how will we get them back into the fold or see them fulfill potential? You know, by the grace of God, we have to work towards building capacity. I believe this is what we're saying. Building capacity to bear pain. And um, you know, those who as, uh, aspire to leadership must must think along these lines. You know, you're not 
supposed to get a position because only because of of your qualification and what you can do, but what you were able to endure and the kind of hope that you could inspire and the whole concept and notion of, of partnership and bringing people together from all spheres, all across the line, you know? So the whole concept of building capacity to bear pain, like you said, um, Dr. Hudson, you know, it's, it's not easy, you know, you're going into some situations you, you don't know what the other party might might do, all right? But because you have the end in mind, you have the whole concept, you know, as Guyanese, we're thinking sons of one mother, you are reaching, sometimes you're overreaching just because you're looking for um some amount of reconciliation and being able to, to move forward. So leadership is critical. Leadership is equal to influence. And those of us at every Every sphere, you know, not just politics or or religion or whatever the case might be. Anywhere, anywhere you you, you aspire to leadership, you have to ensure that by the grace of God, you build capacity to deal with pain because offense will happen, and you we have to find a way how we will get out of the get out of the rut and move forward. Or else, we making sense. Doctor Lee, the last two minutes are yours. Well, um, quite an interesting discussion. And I, I think as from a national perspective, we've reached a stage where we have identified the fact that we are all sons of one mother. But I think there needs to be acceptance across the board that indeed we are um, sons of one mother. And also I think we need, uh, we need to look at finding um, some level of mediation um, we identified so many problems, and I think um, we are at a stage where our problems are so intractable that we need somebody or a group of people who have the capacity that they can bring all of us together to the point where we acknowledge that indeed we are all sons of one mother and we have a great nation to build. This is Choices, and uh, we want to thank you for your viewership, and we pray that you also would work together um, with all of us to make this nation a great land for all Guyana. God bless you, and we see you soon. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salisha on behalf of the set, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.